Welcome to my to this today's episode of my V blog. Um, and on today's episode, I'm going to be talking about some of the new features that has been added to the new GMAT, to the GMAT exam. So traditionally for the GMAT exam, um, you have uh, four sections, right? So you have the um, analytical writing, you have the integrated reasoning section, um, the quant section, and the verbal. So if you look on the screen, right, I'm going to blow up the screen here. So this is the current original order in which the current GMAT is um, arranged when you start the test. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is for most schools that you're applying to, the quant section and the verbal sections, these last two sections, are the two sections that make up your GMAT score. So when you think about a GMAT score of an 800, when you're trying to get, you know, a 7, 750 to get into like uh, Sloan School at MIT or get here at Georgia Tech, uh, different schools, the quant and the verbal scores are the ones that really, really count a lot more uh, matter. Not to say the analytical writing isn't important or the integrated reasoning section, but the quant and the verbal make up your GMAT score. Well, thankful, um, thankful to the uh, GMAT, the guys who write the GMAT test, starting Ju July 11th, 2017, they are now going to allow students to be able to rearrange the order in which they see the test scores and um, the test questions. And that is huge because traditionally what we've told a lot of our students here at Success Prep is to not really um, try to make sure they don't burn their energy on the analytical writing um, assessment and the integrated reasoning sections because the quant section and the verbal are the ones that are really, really important. Okay. So now that they can rearrange it. So guess what? We can now get our students to actually bring the verbal and the quant section to the beginning of the GMAT test. And guys, you absolutely want to do this. So starting July 20, July 11th, 2017, you will be able to do that. So when you get into the test, when you start setting up your test, before you start the test at all, you have the option to be able to do that. And we strongly suggest and suggest that you do that. Now, the question now is, fine, now you can bring the verbal and the quant section to the front of your test on the GMAT. So which one should you do first? Now, traditionally, when students come to our prep courses, they're going to identify themselves as either strong on math or, or strong on verbal. And this is actually, this is pretty relatively new concept. As you can see, I'm recording this on July uh, 18th. So this test has only, this has only been going on for about eight days now um, in terms of, hey, you know, what should, what are students allowed to do? And one of the things we've been seeing with our GMAT prep courses is I've been asking students, I said, hey, would you rather do your, um, if you're a stronger math student, would you rather do the stronger part uh, of the test first or the verbal of your weaker part? And I'm getting mixed um, answers on that. On that, I, I really think going into the test, this is something you want to kind of have a strategy for to say, you know what, I'm either going to do, if I'm stronger in math, I'm going to want to knock off, knock out my um, stronger part first. All right. And then be able to deal with the other parts that I'm a little bit weaker on later on. Now, some people like that because then it gives them energy to go into the test. I'm also seeing students who say, you know what, I actually want to do my weaker part first because I want to be able to give my best energy to the weakest part. So every one thinks about this very differently, but you want to have a strategy going in. So the other two options you're going to have on the GMAT is you're going to have the second option where you could put the verbal first, the quant, and then the integrated reasoning and analytical re reasoning. Or you could do the quant first and then the verbal, and then you do the integrated reasoning and analytical reasoning. Whichever thing, whatever you do, just have a strategy going in for whether you want to handle your stronger part first or you want to handle your weaker part first. And everybody thinks about that differently. I'm still kind of evolving on, I'm still trying to fi figure out if there's one that's going to be better than the other. But for right now, um, I, I, you know, our students are, you definitely want to be able to switch to these two options, this option here or this option here but decide whether you want to do your stronger stronger area first or your weaker area. And, and either way you go, just pick, an, pick an, a strategy and go with that strategy. And so that's the end of my vlog today. Just wanted to kind of introduce you guys to and, and alert you guys to this new feature on the GMAT and just make sure that you come up with a strategy before testing. Thank you very much. And I'll see you again on another episode of my vlog. Thank you.